we don't want to run fast. We want to run faster. We don't want to die at age 100. We want to live, you know, past 120 beyond that. Uh, we want to overcome human limitations. And we focus on building technology that augments human capabilities. So what we do with our implants is we design things that currently today can be used to overcome limitations. And we start small. The finger magnet implant is really interesting because while it can do neat little party tricks like pick up a pin or something like that, it can do much more than that. Is that? This is Jennifer. Hey. hey. I'm sorry, nice to meet you. She's here for the, for the magnet implant. I had this magnet implanted in my finger as part of a story I'm working on about this subculture yeah. of people who are putting things in their bodies to augment human capabilities. I have almost a sixth sense. I can feel these pulses coming from my phone or laptop or the microwave. I have to ask, was it painful? It was extremely painful, yes. There are lots of diseases where the return for implanting the device far exceeds whatever the you know, pain or discomfort of having the procedure done. And like a cochlear implant for people that are hard of hearing or you know, legally deaf, an insulin pump is technically something you implant to some degree. Big pharma and the medical industry from the financial standpoint is threatened by what we're doing. We're talking about early detection of problems that will ease the requirements on the system and they're a system designed to make money. We eventually want to go much further than that and work with neurochemistry. Things like serotonin, things like dopamine, things like oxytocin. Getting alerts when these neurochemicals change in your body. So what would, in your opinion, be the biggest challenge to the adoption of implants? So I think the biggest challenge is always getting through FDA approval. If you look at what the FDA has done, you know, they've basically said if it's invasive, if it's, it's an implant, and it has to go through FDA approval for medical devices. Would a regular person without a medical condition be enticed to get an implant of some sort? So I think there's always a percentage of people that want to try new things. You know, the possibility of doing a microchip that you can put underneath the skin that contains your whole medical record or could identify people on battlefields in times of war. That's a space where I think there's you know, a little bit more debate about what makes sense and what's realistic and appropriate risk for return on investment. Right now, biohacking is a very niche thing. It's kind of underground, but that's really starting to change. And at some point shortly after five years, you're gonna be start to be looked at oddly if you don't have an implant, if you're not augmented in some way.